Hello everybody and welcome to this short introductory uh, video uh, introducing the Belief in the Northeast Holy Well recording project. What I want to do in this short um, presentation is quickly tell you a little bit about holy wells uh, and why they're interesting and what they might uh, look like on the ground and then talk a little bit about how we're going to start a project trying to identify possible holy wells in the northeast of England uh, and I'll talk you through the uh, procedures for taking part in our recording project. Holy wells or springs once formed an important part of the religious landscape of northeast England, particularly in the early medieval and high medieval period. They often continue to be used well into the 17th, 18th or even 19th century. Some could be elaborate affairs with stone built structures over them or carefully constructed basins or pools. And others could be little more than a muddy puddle where a spring or a source of water emerged from the ground. A good example of a well-built and carefully maintained holy well is that of St Elric and St Godric at Walsingham in County Durham, uh, shown here on the left. An example of one of the less well-developed uh, holy wells is the so-called Pinwell near Wooler up in Northumberland. You can see that here on the right. In Britain, the use of ritual wells and springs is best known in the medieval and early modern period, and sites could be visited simply for good luck, Others were, were reputed for their healing powers. Sometimes the water was simply sipped or poured onto the part of the body that needed healing. And in other cases, cases a small offering, such as a pin, might be left by the visitor. And that's probably why the pin well at Wooler has got its name. Sometimes in Northern England and Scotland, a small rag or ribbon could be tied to a nearby tree. Use of holy wells was perfectly respectable, a perfectly respectable part of Christian worship in this period. Many were, were located close to or even in churchyards and others were given Christian names. On here on this slide, we can see at Gainford on the top left, down, down uh, in, on the River Tees, St. Mary's Church and just outside the churchyard, we can see St. Mary's Well. The bottom right up in Weirdale, we can see Hampsterley, and you can see the churchyard churchyard marked on the map on the right, and you can see the Lady Well, so that's Our Lady's Well, referring to the Virgin Mary, a little bit away from the church, but still clearly in, in, in relatively close proximity. And it's these kind of names that are often an important clue when we're looking at maps of the site of possible wells. It's often suggested that the use of holy wells can go back to pre-Christian times, and it's certainly possible that some sites may have been of considerable antiquity. And we know that in prehistoric societies, wells and springs are often seen as having real religious significance. Today, there's also a new revival of interest in holy wells, particularly amongst those with an interest in New Age or neo-pagan beliefs. So what are we going to be looking for on maps? Because that's what we're going to be doing for the first part of this project. We're going to begin by looking at all the past Ordnance Survey maps for Durham and Northumberland. These Ordnance Survey maps were first produced in the mid-19th century and provide a coverage of the entire region. The maps are often very detailed and have lots of information, including noting the location of a range of springs, wells and fountains. Um, so what are we going to be looking for? The main evidence we can use is local place names. The technical term is toponym. Now, the most obvi obvious place name to be looking for is not surprisingly Holy Well or, or Holy Well as a single word. And there are often variants to this spelling, Holy Well, Halley Well, for example. Sometimes the name is related to an actual marked well. But sometimes it's given to a nearby building. There might be a Holy Well house or a Holy Well burn, for example, uh, as a natural feature. And all these are things we need to record on our survey. Another clue, as you've already seen, is that a well or spring might have a religious name, such as a saint's name, say so Oswald's well, St. Cuthbert's well, St. Mary's well, or another religious term, Our Lady's well, Lady well. Sometimes the terms, there are terms that are a bit more unusual. We've already seen a picture of a pin well near Wooler, but we might see names like rattling well or roaring well, perhaps referring to the name the water made, as it, the noise the water made as it gushed out. The well might even be associated with a legendary figure. On this slide, we can see on the left, up at Greenhead, uh, in the south of Northumberland, near Hadrian's Wall, we can see a King Arthur's well uh, is, is noted. And on the right, at the village of Colwell in Northumberland, we actually have three different wells. We've got 
Coley's Well uh, at the top, which is probably where the village got its name from, but also a Pricky's Well. I wonder if that's maybe relating to pins. And finally, at the bottom, we've got Robin Hood's Well. Basically, if a well or a spring has an interesting, unusual or an intriguing name, it needs to be recorded. So that's what we're going to do. So how's the project going to work? We're going to have four broad stages. This stage we're launching now is the initial survey of the first edition of Ordnance Survey Maps. And we're going to do this digitally and remotely. So this is something you can do from home. Then, we, once we've identified a series of interesting looking sites, we're then going to follow them up by seeing whether they're shown on other older maps or plans. Uh, and hopefully this will involve visiting local record offices. Then we're going to follow up on that by making some field visits, seeing what some of these wells look like actually today, see if they survive. And then hopefully after all that, we'll do a little bit of uh, formal recording or possibly even excavation of a small group, a small subset of the sites which we have identified. So how are we going to be running the digital survey? Well, the first thing you need to do is if you want to get involved, you need to contact me and my email's there. And I will send you a researcher ID number. So that will be your number for the course of the project. And I'll also send you links to a series of maps. I'll give you three maps initially, small maps of an area about two kilometers by two kilometers, roughly speaking. What you need to do is follow those map links on the internet, and that will take you through to the digital version of the map. You look at that map online. Uh, if you see something which you think might be a holy well, then it needs recording. So to, then the next stage is you press Alt and then you right click on the point where the well is and that will bring up a new map screen. Then using that, there'll be the option to copy the grid reference to a clipboard, to your clipboard on your computer. And then I will send you a link, but you'll, you'll also have the link for a online recording form and you can put that data into the recording form. That's only in general terms, so don't worry if you haven't got all the details, because there's going to be a second video which shows you how to actually do this in practice. So your job now, if you want to stay involved in the project, is to watch the second video, see how to do the recording in practice, and then contact me for your first allocation of maps.